So, um, can anyone see a recording button? Does this look like it's, I thought there'd be a louder announcement about this. It does say that it's recording. Okay, then what a great start we're off to. I'll cut, I'll cut this part. <laughs> uh, so we're live and we'll be live until after, until I announce that we stop. Um, people who are on top of this as well, if we get into Q&A and I haven't hit stop, um, any co-hosts who know what they're doing, please do. Please do feel free to stop or poke me about it. Um, so uh, we're super excited to have Amy Bahari and Kara Scarfoni speaking tonight on a framework for trustworthy AI use in Ontario. Um, Amy is a passionate civil servant dedicated to building a kinder government. Her unrelenting optimism and enthusiasm inspires people to take bold steps, make unexpected connections, and consider new perspectives. Uh, Kara thrives on collaboration and partnerships, and the main word she would use to describe herself as enthusiastic, and she brings this enthusiasm to her work in open data and open government. Um, so our, I guess I'll, I'll pass the floor to both of you. Do you are you able to make to share your screen right now if I if I get out of my own? You should both be co-hosts if you need to share. Perfect. Amy is on it. Amazing. I apologize for the Amy, light. You are Amazing. muted still, just if, if you want to come off. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt Kara. I have that um, uh, passed, so I was trying to be good. <laughs> You're great. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Kara Scarfoni. I am a data analyst at the Ontario Digital Service in the data innovation something group. We're still in the process of renaming ourselves, so we do data, open data, open government stuff. So very excited to be here with my partner in crime, Amy Bahari. Amy, if you want to introduce yourself. Yep, I'm Amy Bahari. I work with Kara in Ontario's Digital Service. Uh, we're all things around data and data innovation, all the stewardship pieces, the access, the big O open around the open government partnership, around open government, around open data. We like to say all the fun stuff uh, is our file. Um, and as you saw in our bios, uh, enthusiasm, enthusiastic shows up a lot. Um, so we're hoping to continue to channel that uh, into the evening. I have small children, so that's always a little, a little touch and go at this time, but uh, we're very excited to be here. So thanks again to everyone. And uh, Kara, do you want to get us started? I would love to, Amy. Do you mind blowing that up to make it a little bit bigger? I will see what I can do. Hold on. Amazing. All these things are blocking my spots. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. So before we jump into our presentation, I just wanted to get a sense of people's familiarity with AI. So It'll, I'm not sure if I'll be able to see it, the number of hands, but just to get you thinking about your familiarity with AI. So raise your hand if you are very comfy with AI. You know the technical jargon, have used it, or would feel comfortable using it. So just raise your hand if you feel if you feel very very comfortable. If I was like do an AI, you would be like yes, I'm on it, or a thumbs up. Whatever emoji you feel best expresses your feelings. All right. Awesome. So we have a few of those. That's great. Um, if you feel, raise your hand if you feel kind of comfortable with it. If you've been around it, you know the basics and you kind of get the general gist of AI. Sort of that middle ground. You've heard of it. Kind of like, yeah. Okay, we got a few of those. Uh, okay, so hands down. Raise your hands if you are wildly uncomfortable with the thought of AI. You have no idea what it is but has maybe something to do with computers, possibly, maybe, shrug emoji. Maybe you've seen the Terminator films? Yeah. How you feeling? Yeah. Okay. So we got a few of those too. So we have, we run the gambit, which is great. Um, so I have great news for you. You don't have to be an expert in AI to participate in this, which is good news because I definitely am not. I fall somewhere between the first and second categories. So one of the goals of this consultation is actually to make AI more inclusive and within reach of those who otherwise wouldn't give it a second thought, who wouldn't really think about how AI impacts their daily lives. And, but it is important that people do consider it because, oh, I'm sorry, I've got bright lights, big windows. So if I disappear, it's the sunlight's fault. 
Um, so it's important that people do think about AI given the widespread impacts that it does have on our lives currently and the direction where we're going. In the future, we're seeing AI growing exponentially. So it will be part of our daily lives in the future as well. And that's why we're here today because AI isn't going anywhere. Its use is growing rapidly in various sectors, business, healthcare, social services, and government. And as Amy said, there's a tendency to worry about AI. People hear AI and they think the rise of our robot overlords, Terminator's coming to get them, you know, computers are calling all the shots, humans have become obsolete. And there are actually a lot of benefits of AI. There's certainly areas that need to be looked at, but there's also a lot of benefits. And Amy's going to get into those a little bit when we talk about the commitments and how we're planning on looking into AI use for Ontario. So there are a lot of these benefits. And as I said, to experience these benefits, there need to be rules. We need to make sure that AI is being used responsibly. We need to make sure that there are regulations in place, that people know that they can trust how AI is used in various sectors. And today we're gonna to be talking about government use. So, which is why we're here today. So with your help, we're creating a framework for responsible AI use in Ontario, specifically within the Ontario government. And everyone's lives are touched by the government in one way or another. So it is really important that we establish these guidelines that we look into how AI is being used to deliver the services that people rely on. As an added bonus, our framework and the creation of our framework is actually going into our Open Government Partnership Action Plan. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Action Plan, we've been a part, Ontario has been a part of the OGP since 2016. It's a group, uh, it's a, I'm, I'm gonna read this so I get this right. OGP is a global organization composed of 78 countries and 76 local governments that uphold and promote the principles of an open government. So this isn't just a few people getting together thinking, hey, we should you know, maybe have some open government. This is a worldwide global initiative where people are committing to upholding these principles of open government. So, this puts Ontario's action right. use. Sorry, someone say something? Hi. Comment? <clears throat> Question? Clearing your throat? All good? Excellent. All right. So our, our participation in the OGP and the Open Government Partnership actually puts Ontario on a world stage. So as we commit to these principles of AI, openness and transparency, we're, the world can see what we're doing. It's posted on their website. Anyone in the world can go and see how Ontario is doing in terms of its uh, control of responsible AI. So this is really exciting. I'm very excited about it. So Amy's gonna go through some of the commitments that we are including in the action plan and how we're gonna sort of work through the co-creation process. Yeah, thanks, Kara. Uh, so as Kara said, we're like, it's a lot of government jargon and international government jargon here, um, that it is a framework we're putting together that doubles as our action plan. Really what it is, is over the next month, we wanna talk with everyone we can to figure out what should the government commit to doing over the next year to further trustworthy AI in Ontario. And we've made three commitments to build this idea of trustworthy AI use within government. And so that's what I'm gonna walk through here in the next couple of bits. So our first commitment is no AI in secret. So we are gonna to commit to make sure that the use of AI by the government will always be transparent with people knowing when, why, and how algorithms are used and what their rights are if harms occur. So as Kara said, we're not asking everyone to become AI experts, we are going to make sure that you are aware of when algorithms or some computer program is impacting you and why it is impacting you and how we are using it and how you can reach out and challenge or find out more about how it's working, challenge what it's doing, sort of get more involved. And so that's our first commitment is no AI in secret. And so we're asking people, okay, if we're committed to making this happen, what should we do? What do you expect us as your government or the people who are working for you, with you, um, to be doing in order to prove that no AI is in secret? So some of the actions we could do is be fully transparent when using algorithms, uh, when it interacts with people. We can create accountability for the use 
of algorithms and analytics and, and more database technology in, in government and give people uh, the rights to address potential biases or harms or different out outputs and impacts that are created by that use. We can provide clarity and transparency on how Ontario collects data for use in AI and other elements of AI. So really, what are some of the actions you want to see around that building out of transparency and accountability? How can you know what is happening? How can you have faith uh, that you are seeing the whole picture and that you are understanding what is being done in the background? The next commitment is a really getting at the heart of this trustworthiness. How, uh, how can you trust that the AI use is trustworthy, that it is done responsibly, that it is done in your best interest. And so part of that is making sure there are rules and tools in place to safely and securely apply algorithms and this new technology to government programs and services that are based on risk. As Kara said, the government touches everyone. We have so many different programs and services that are vital to people. And it is vital that they understand what is being done and that the supports they need are being done equitably, that they are inclusive, and that any computerization, automation, use of data is done thoughtfully, that risk has been thought through. So if we are really going to build this trust, what do you want the government to have thought about or to do over the next year? Should they be putting in uh, new regulation or laws in place? And if so, what should those laws focus on so that you know that it's trustworthy and the government is working on your behalf uh, with your best interest at heart. What kind of assessment tools do you think should be in place? And you don't need to be, oh, you know, some very high detailed specs, but just I want a tool that considers, you know, my best interest. I want to be able to see how it's working. When I talk about risk, I'm concerned about my privacy. I am concerned about whether the money I need from a particular program is going to reach me in time. Um, those types of things. What, what, what do you need to see in order to believe that AI use and different data-based technologies is trustworthy by government? And finally, the third commitment is that the AI, the algorithms, the database technology is serving all Ontarians, that it is respecting everyone's rights, that everyone is benefiting economically and socially from these, two new, these new technologies and database technologies, and that they are rooted in individual rights and reflect the diverse communities of our province. And so again, what does that mean to you? What would you expect or want to see your government doing to prove that they are trying to serve all of our communities? That how do we tackle those systemic biases? Because that is really what I see of the great benefit of applying these new database technologies of AI, of machine learning, of these different ways of delving into our data to get that uh, greater equity, that greater inclusion, that leveling of playing fields. So how do we make sure that happens? We know there is bias. We know there are systemic barriers in place. How can we use these new technologies to tear those down and to create a better future, better services, more inclusive, more equitable services? And so really wanting everyone to understand that this is important to everyone. It isn't about the technical pieces. It is about what do you need to see? What do you need to have the government be considering and have you here as part of their consultations on this to make sure that the movement in this direction, this adoption of these new technologies that is happening very quickly is respecting the rights that you, your community hold dear. And so that's what we're really looking at here today is to talk to everybody we can about these three commitments and also then have you go and speak with your communities and your networks uh, about getting people aware that this is happening and come and give us the input or, or help us connect with those who aren't able to give input in the way we're approaching it right now. How do we reach the different communities and make sure that there is no AI in secret? The AI is earning everyone's trust because there are rules and protections in place and that this AI, these algorithms, these uh, automations are really serving all Ontarians. So this 
um, consultation that's starting right now, it's gonna go till June 4th, and that is just to prioritize um, what actions we should be taking place. There will be more specific um, consultations once we have committed to those three to six um, core actions that the government is going to, as Kara said, commit to inter on the international stage. What is Ontario gonna do over the next year so that at the end of the year, we can say we are closer to having no AI in secret, that the AI used by government is trusted and that the AI does in fact serve all Ontarians. So that is what we're hoping to talk about in our breakout room today. We're hoping people are going to think about those questions, uh, help us understand if the language we're using is throwing up barriers that we don't mean to um, and help us talk about how we can get more people in the discussion. So we want your feedback on these questions and how they're going. And we also want to hear from you on how we can reach others and make sure that this important discussion isn't leaving anybody out. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Thanks, Amy. And it's not just, so we do have the link here um, and I believe someone put it in the chat. Uh, thank you, Amy Farrow, one of our other awesome data folks from uh, ODS and she's been really helpful with all of our stuff so she'll she's put it in the chat she may put it in the chat again just to bring it back to the surface so we do encourage people to fill out the online consultation form but also get in touch we we have an open data at ontario.ca email address that we check constantly so if you want to write a whole essay if you want to give us a report if you have thoughts you want to Get in touch with us to arrange a discussion or a group discussion if you want to you know arrange a focus group in your community with your community we are open to all methods of consultation as amy said we're trying to reach as many people as possible because uh, you know data is only as good as data collection so if we can reach as wide a scale as possible then we will be able to provide the best advice and and move forward with this in a really positive inclusive manner so thank you um, do we have, are we moving on to questions? Do we have anything else we want to add? Th thanks so much both. Uh, yeah, we, we, we do have time for, we've got about seven minutes for questions and then uh, it sounds like you're willing to do a breakout, which is awesome. You beat me to it. I didn't even need to ask. Uh, so anything we can't fit in questions, like we'd love to, if you could make a pitch as well, um, then, you know, you can claim a room and anyone who has follow-ups can go in there. 